Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and understanding covariance using Excel. In this Excel worksheet, I have fictitious data. I have two variables, a survey and an aptitude test. And let's assume that the possible range for the survey would be 1 through 10, and the possible range for the aptitude test would be 20 to 80. So you can see that there's a different unit of analysis between the survey and the aptitude test. Let's also assume that we believe there's a linear relationship between these two variables and we want to measure how strong that association is. And we want to determine the direction of the association. So let's move now to covariance. So in Excel, covariance can be calculated for a population or for a sample. I'm going to be using the sample covariance because oftentimes in counseling research we are working with a sample and not an entire population. So the function here would be fairly straightforward. It would be covariance dot s. That's the sample covariance. So the first would be all the scores in the survey and the second would be all the scores in the aptitude test. And I'm just using control shift down arrow to select all these scores quickly. So now we have the covariance. It's 9.25. So what can we tell about the relationship between these two variables from knowing this value for the covariance of 9.25? Well, covariance is unstandardized unlike correlation, which is standardized. So the range for covariance is negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range for correlation is negative 1 to 1. So the correlation coefficient does not have units, and the covariance does have units. It's expressed in units. And those units are a product of the variables. So we can't assess the strength of the relationship with just the covariance, but we can assess the direction. A positive covariance indicates that above average values for one variable are associated with above average values on the other variable or below average values on one variable are associated with below average on another. A negative covariance value indicates that above average values on one variable are associated with below average values on the other variable. So just by looking at this covariance value, we know that the correlation will be positive. We'll have a positive correlation between these two variables. So I'm going to determine the correlation using the function in Excel, but also using this equation to the right. The correlation coefficient equals the covariance between x and y divided by the standard deviation of x multiplied by the standard deviation of y. So first using the function, I'll move into cell E4, and this is C-O-R-R-E-L and then in this case the two ranges. So survey, comma, and then aptitude test. You can see we have a correlation value of 0.41. So to demonstrate how we calculate the correlation value using this equation, I'm going to calculate the sample variances and the sample standard deviations for both the survey and aptitude test variables. And again, just like with covariance, there is a sample and a population function available for both variance and standard deviation. I'll be using the sample. So it'll be equal sign var dot s, that's sample variance. And this will be just for the survey variable. So we have 4.98. And I'm just going to copy this range for the next function, control C. And standard deviation, 
will be stdev.s, sample standard deviation. I'll just control V to paste in that same range for the survey values. And we have a standard deviation of 2.23. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And of course, that makes the variance the square of the standard deviation. Then for aptitude test, I'm just going to select the variance and standard deviation values for survey and autofill to the right. And because the way I've configured the data over here, I have the correct sample variance for aptitude test and the correct sample standard deviation for aptitude test. So now calculate the correlation coefficient in two ways. First, using the variance. So in this first cell, I'll multiply the variance of survey by the variance of aptitude test. You see it's 519. I'll take the square root of that to get the denominator here. So that'll be equal sign SQRT and then the value 519. So we have 22.79. So that'll be the denominator. And we know the correlation coefficient is equal to the covariance between the two variables divided by that denominator. So this will just be equal sign the covariance divided by 22.79. And you can see we arrive at the same value, 0.41. Using the standard deviation saves us a step. It saves us the step of taking the square root. So this will be equal sign the standard deviation from survey multiplied by the standard deviation from aptitude test. You can see that's equal to the value I have down here, 22.79. And then the covariance divided by that value brings us back to the correlation coefficient value, 0.41. I hope you found this video on calculating and understanding covariance in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.